Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do the mid-year book freak out tag. It is now July, so now I officially feel comfortable to put this up because all the books I'm going to have read, I have read. So I've been thinking about doing it for the last week or so, but I still wanted to finish a few books. So here we are, mid-year review. Now this is my first actual year of reading and I've read about 60 books I would say. It's a lot of books for someone that doesn't read but now I read so I can't say that anymore so this I'll tag the original people the tag came from down below and you can check that out as well let's get started so the first question is best book you've read in 2020 I am going to start off with the book that made me read because I love being the beast any type of Beauty and the Beast, you know, redemp what's the word? I can't even, s re renditions? Retelling? Retelling, that's a better word. We're just gonna go retelling. Um, so I'm gonna say A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmerer. I always freak out with the last name, I don't know why. This book is amazing. I love the characters, keeps you guessing. It's, uh, I thought, I was a little nervous at first because I'm very much, if you don't follow it, like, it's a retelling, yes, but, like, I'm very particular on my what you change and what you don't, but she did an amazing job with this, and I couldn't not pick up the second one to read that one, and the third one I have to wait till 2021, 20, January. <sighs> Welcome to the world of a reader. And it's sad, but you know, we're halfway there. We are halfway there. So this by far is probably my best read of 2020. The best sequel, if you know me, is A Heart So Fierce and Broken. Um, again, I mean, it's, it's amazing. I ended up doing my own spray little painted edges there. It turned out okay. It's the first time I ever did it, so I can get better. But, um, it's, it's amazing. New characters are put out there and you still don't really, you still don't really know what's going to happen. And I love series like that. that just keeps you guessing and guessing from book to book. And I, I really can't wait for the third one. I really, I really can't. So there's that for you. Three, a new release I haven't read, but I want to is a song below water. Um, love this cover. This is a gorgeous book. Um, I'm really excited to read it. Um, it's about two sirens. Um, huh? The author is Bethany C. Amaro. And, you know, challenges against today's racism and sexism. I just think it's, um, it's going to be a really good read, I feel. Um, and Pacific Northwest. You can't really go wrong with that either. Um, so there is let's see most anticipated book for second year second part of the year is going to be Crescent City I've heard really good things about this I do love Sarah J Mass um the Throne of Glass series I love um Akatar of course I'm still in the process of finishing that one but I am really excited to read this one I've heard that people love it especially after the first 200 pages um but I'm really excited to dive right into that one I'm hoping it'll be on my TBR in the next couple months oh, most disappointing read of this year now I have two one a frozen heart now I read this one because I thought I had to read another book with the heart in the title. So I got this one on audiobook and it literally just follows the movie like verbatim. So there's a little bit more with um Hans. But I don't know, I guess I just expressed since it was in book form that maybe it'd be just a tad different, but no. And then as much as I love this book, because the series is amazing, um, 
I know that she was done with the Shadowhunter universe after the first three. And this is because she had more ideas after the Infernal Devices. I'm looking at my sister's face right now. She's not very excited that this is on the list for me. But um, I kind of feel it was forced. A lot of it was. And I guess, you know, that makes sense since you need to kind of reintroduce things and get your timeline going and moving again. Um, it's not a bad book at all. I still, I still really enjoyed it. I think I still gave it five stars or four stars maybe because of that. But I just felt a lot of it was forced and I don't really like Simon and a lot of it was Simon. But overall, I, I get that she needed to open it back up for everyone to get reacquainted and put everything into place to be able to open up to her new ideas for the other the last three so I get it but still a disappointing read don't hate me I still love you uh, most surprising read of 2020 um, is power divided by s bear um, I actually got this from her she sent me a copy and it sounded really good um, and at first I was kind of reading it, I was like, I don't know, I don't know about this. And then, like, you just can't put it down. Like, things are fast moving and it's just, it's just amazing. I mean, there's, there's not so much to say. There's um, nine, nine Realms in America and um, I'm better at reading what they say is what it's about. And I don't want to give any spoilers. Um, so, centuries after two species of humans emerged from the age of ice, the evolutionaries drove away the first generation humans from what was left of North America and settled into a peaceful utopia. No war, no hunger, no crime. Until Princess Violet did the unthinkable. Now on the run, Violet stumbles upon long-buried truths, and when a new threat to destroy the peace of Amira arises, she realizes she holds the key to the people's survival but in untangling the web of her life violet finds she is completely unprepared to face the new reality that has her set her world on fire determined to save her people from those who would destroy them violet is willing to risk anything but is it too late um i just don't like to give spoilers of this at all but you guys have definitely picked this up um it's it's amazing. I really cannot wait for the second one. And I think she said she's working on book two and three right now. So check it out. So good. I'll link her Twitter down below or her Instagram down below too. Um, but I thought it was just going to be an all right book, but it ended up being an amazing one. I love it. All right. Uh, favorite new author, debut, or new to me, since almost everybody is new to me. Um, surprise, um, Bridget Kimmermer, and I'm going to see Cassandra Clare as well. I'm really enjoying the Shadowhunter world, and, um, it kind of reminds me of growing up with HP, but a different kind of world. And I'm really enjoying Some the taking that in. World. Some would say better world. Some would say a better world. Um, but I'm really excited to finish off the Mortal Instruments and Infernal Devices and then start the other... Dark Artifices. Dark Artifices and then the Chain of Gold. The and hours. The what? The Last Hours. The Last Hours trilogy. So, there's that. New fictional character crush or favorite character. Now, I read a couple of Twilight Princess mangas. We all know Link is my man. He's He will always be my man. Um, so I don't know if you want to count that as a crush. Um, I really do like Ren and... Um, oh my gosh, I'm blinking. Grey um, from the Cursebreaker books. Don't really know if I have a favorite because I like things about each of them. <coughs> Excuse me. About each of them individually, but I don't know which one I like more than the other. But my new favorite character is Malik. I count them as one because they are one and the same and you can't go wrong with Malik. 
You really can. Like, Malik is, like, life. Malik is everything. Don't mess with Malik. Don't say anything about Malik. Like precious babies. Malik is life. Book that made me cry. I'm going into that. I don't, and then that says it made me cry. It gave me the feels towards the end of book five. City of Lost Souls. Spoiler alert if you haven't read it. You can skip ahead a little bit. Um, it just made me sad. I don't know whether to say the spoiler or not. If they read it, they might. They might, they might already know. know. Probably. So it was just the feels. I really just want to read the last book. See. I cannot. But I can't. I can't yet. But hopefully this month. All right, and then the most beautiful book you bought or received. Now there's a lot of books because when I started reading, I want all the special edition type ones. So you got the Crooked Kingdom and Six of Crows. Um, Six of Crows is red and then red spray darkness. But I also really like the Girl and the Stars. I just love the cover and then the black sprayed edges. Um, frankly in love, gorgeous color combination, and then the sprayed edges, and then, oh, I mean, look at that. And then Red Queen and Glass Sword editions. You, I mean, sprayed edges just put it over the top a little bit, but this edition is gorgeous as well. So, those are my most beautiful books I've bought, and that completes... Oh no, there's one more. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? I didn't even think of that one. I want to finish the whole Shadowhunters universe. All of it. Up to the point where it has to be released. Oh yeah. Obviously. But I do want to read those ones. Um, I also want to finish um, Akatar Seer, all those ones and the Throne of Glass series. I think it's doable. For sure. I mean, I read 60 books this month. A lot of them were audiobooks, but I work a lot too, so I list them. But if I find an audiobook isn't that great, I don't. And I've been reading these ones because I just, there's just something about reading a book versus an audiobook. And I just feel that these books need to be read. You need to put your whole self into these. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below in the comments what your guys' favorite reads were this year or and your least favorites. And if you also made one of these videos, go ahead and post a comment with your page and I can go check it out. Um, but yeah, I guess that concludes this video for today and we'll see you next time. Bye!